Well, hello, it's Friday the 15th of March, which is World Sleep Day. Um, I wanted to come online and talk a little bit about the importance of sleep from a wellness and a functional point of view. I did wonder if I had to go like hide the bags before I came on live. Being a mum to a toddler that doesn't sleep particularly well, I sometimes feel that sleep is a bit of an Achilles heel, but I didn't go on and hide the bags. I thought I'd come true and say, I feel, I feel your pain. And there really is some uh, sleep deprivation happening to so many of us. But what we want to think about is why is sleep important and what can we do to optimize it? So sleep is extremely important for our overall wellness. Adequate sleep is essential for our physical health, our mental health, our cognitive function, and it's during our deep sleep that our body repairs itself, it cleans up, it consolidates itself. It not only consolidates our memories, but it works on optimizing detoxification, hormonal imbalance. And I don't just mean hormones as in sex hormones, I'm thinking here as well about like regulation of our blood glucose. And you've heard us come live before and talk about metabolic flexibility. Sleep deprivation is one of the biggest things to reduce our metabolic flexibility. So therefore, if we're trying to reduce metabolic diseases, things like type two diabetes, obesity, and then more serious diseases that are classed as metabolic diseases, Alzheimer's, dementias, cardiovascular diseases, cancers, then we need to be thinking about anything that reduces that metabolic flexibility. So lack of sleep can go on and contribute to a number of health issues from obesity and particularly visceral adipose tissue, fat around the middle, and that's where most people don't want it. Heart disease, diabetes, mood disorders, and impaired immune function. So are you now listening? Are you now thinking that this is important for you? So ideally, we need to be looking at a minimum of seven to nine hours sleep per night as an adult. How do we achieve that? So first of all, we need to think about being in bed for the right number of hours. And people try and defy this statistic by going to bed at midnight, setting their alarm for six and still achieving eight hours sleep. It doesn't work. So first of all, we want to be going to bed at an optimal time to maybe have half an hour to wind down our brains and then be looking at that sweet spot of seven to eight hours sleep. Some people need a little bit less than eight, but don't ever cut beyond before seven. Some people need a wee bit more than eight, maybe aiming more towards nine. Obviously, children are different, and I'll let our, our children sleep experts talk about that. Um, so first of all, we need to be in bed at the right time. Second of all, we need to have used the hour before we go to bed to calm our nervous system down. That includes time away from screens, so uh, mobile phones, iPads emit a blue light that sends a message via our eyeballs to our pineal gland to stimulate it. And we want the opposite of that pineal stimulation. We want dark, calm to raise our melatonin levels. Melatonin hormone works on a circadian rhythm, but it uses external stimuli to help to trigger it. One of those external stimuli is it's gone dark outside. But of course, when we hit all the electric lights on, then we don't work to listen in the same way. Um, using side lights in your main room rather than big, bright lights. And then the opposite of that is spending some time outside first thing in the morning to allow your eyeballs to see daylight hours. So that's number one, staying away from screens for that hour before we go to bed. If your brain is full of activity, do you need to discharge some of that? For example, do you need to be thinking about writing things down, journaling, writing down emotions, finding a way to create calm in the brain because most of what's still on our to-do list can wait until tomorrow. Maybe you need to think about calmative agents like magnesium and maybe having a magnesium bath or rubbing the skin with some magnesium with a magnesium cream or a magnesium oil maybe if you're really struggling with your nervous system and calm you need something a little bit stronger for you whether that's a herbal agent or a, a more stronger like magnesium or theanine supplement and of course one of our team can support you with what that looks like then you want to go to bed and your bedroom should be calm and tranquil. 
really all that should happen in your bedroom is sleep and sex and not scrolling. That isn't an S that we're engaging in in the bedroom. So our bedroom should be free of external um, noise, whether that's piles of clothes, piles of rubbish ready for a, a later day. Use the weekend and declutter your bedroom and just think, does your mobile phone really need to be in the bedroom? And the answer is no. So get your mobile phone out, calm your mind and realise how important sleep is for optimal health and well-being. So happy World Sleep Day. And please do be thinking about how important sleep is for your overall health and wellness. And if you need some extra help, let us support you to do it. Take care for now. Bye bye.